I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. Mm. Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. That's what Joe Lagan used to say a long time ago. Oh, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. Mm. Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. Miss Vera Fraser, good evening to you. And then Joe would say, he, he sang a little higher and I sing it. Oh, I am a living testimony. Miss Yvonne H. Whitfield, good evening to you. I could have been dead and gone. Mercy. But Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. Coach Witt, good evening to you. Then Joe said, I've seen miracles after miracles performed in my life. I forgot the rest of it. <laughs> Cause my heart to bleed. Mm. I realize it could have been me. I know I'm not worthy of all, all these blessings. But I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. Miss Anna Reese, I know this part. Oh, I a living testimony. I got a story to tell y'all. Miss Reese, good evening to you. I could have been dead and gone, Miss Annie Reese. But Lord, you let me live on. And I'm grateful too. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, I'm still alive. Mr. Nitra, Lampking Smith, good evening to you. Robert Smith, good evening to you. Welcome in to the Tuesday night edition of MTV Live Bible Study as we matriculate and make our way through uh, this epistle to the Hebrews. I uh, trust that God is walking, uh, God is walking, Lord have mercy, that God is working miraculously in your life and you are walking in the favor of God. God is good. Uh, Miss Benson, good evening to you. And God is good all of the time. Even in tr trials and tribulation, we still declare God is good. Uh, he's good when, we, when we're up, when we're down, when we're in. It doesn't matter. God is just still good. Uh, we are, as I said, making our way, Rosetta, through uh, this letter to Hebrews. Uh, Dr. Gina, Jenny Borkins, and Chris, and the entire Borkins family, good evening to you all, my friends. God bless y'all. Long time, been friends for over 35 years now, and it's, it's, it's good to uh, know people, uh, know good people that you've been friends with down through the years. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 12 tonight. Remember that Hebrews was written to, the letter was written to some Jews, um, basically three classes of people that would have received this letter. Some had com converted to Christianity and they were considering going back to Judaism. Some were teeter-totting. They weren't sure they were ha had one foot in and one foot out. And then there was another crowd that was totally uh, not convinced that Christianity was the way to go. So we don't know uh, the exact audience, except that they were Jews. We don't know 
uh, who actually wrote it. And we don't even know uh, the date it was written, but we do know it was written to Jews or Hebrews, uh, some of them Messianic Jews, which believed in Jesus the Christ. We remember that the theme of, of uh, Hebrews is preferred, better, and uh, superior to. Uh, the author was letting the Jews know that the old, that Jesus, in particular Christ, but everything associated with Christ, uh, Jesus Christ was better, preferred, and superior to what they had in Judaism. He talked about how um, Christ and Christianity was superior to Moses, to the law, to uh, the prophet. Sonia, good evening to you. Uh, to the prophets, to the old Miss Allen, that Jesus and Christianity is superior to um, the the old sacrificial goats and lambs and 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 um, the dead animals. That Jesus is a better sacrifice, and Christianity and Jesus is just better. So those who were in it shouldn't leave it. Those who were teeter totting it should come on over into it, and those who were committed to stand in Judaism need to come to Christianity. That's the basic point because he is preferred. Last week, we talked about faith and, and in chapter number 12, verse one, we told you the ingredients of faith and, and what faith was and how to have faith. You can go back and get that tape. And now I'm going to skip the remainder of chapter 11, uh, that, uh, that which we call the Faith Hall of Fame. And I, I'm, I'm skipping it now, but I'm going to come back to it because and I'm going to Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. Remember the theme. What is he saying Jesus is superior to? Well, remember back in chapter number 10, Miss Patricia, he introduced us, the writer introduced us and the Jews to, to, to a principle, verse 38, chapter 10. Now the just, those which are saved, justified, that God see uh, as if, just as if they have not sinned, shall live by faith. Okay, so he, he, he told her that the just shall live by faith. Chapter number 11, verse number six, he's still with the same thing. Basically what he's saying is that faith, that, that living by faith is better than trying to live by the law. Bernie Hutchinson, good evening to you. It's superior, it's preferred, it's better to live by faith than to try to live by the law. And we told you that the law had its purpose but once the purpose was over, when Jesus cried out, uh, it is finished in John chapter 19, he fulfilled the law and now we and now believers are to go on to grace. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, it says, but without faith, okay, uh, uh, confidence in the word of God, standing on the word of God, Snoop, good evening to you. It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that God is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So he's talking about faith, okay? Now, go, go to chapter number 12, Hebrews chapter number 12. Listen to what Paul said, not Paul, Lord Jesus. Listen to what the writer said. Some, some people think Paul wrote it. I don't know who wrote it, so I, I don't wanna give credit where, where we don't know for sure who, who wrote it. But if you hear a preacher, a pastor, somebody say, Paul, don't question him. Say, so, okay, cool, because Paul could have written it. OK, look at uh, chapter uh, 12, verse number one. And I could preach a whole sermon, Bunny. Lord have mercy, just from verse one. Watch this, Snoop. I can get four points from verse one. I can get C, strip, start and be steadfast just from verse one. Exegies in the text. C, the writer says, my netta, good evening to you. The, the writer is going to say C. The writer is going to say strip. The, law, the writer is going to say start. And the writer going to say steadfast, all in verse one. I am an exegetical preacher, so pastor exegete the text. Note what he says to see. He says, wherefore, which is a linking word, wherefore, like therefore, which uh, evangelist Frazier, um, which means where he is going logically connects with where he has been. So where has he been? Note what he says. Wherefore, seeing, there it is, see. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He's telling us to see these cloud of witnesses. Now, in the Greek, uh, the word often is translated uh, that, that in heaven's grandstand. And most preachers, Mid Valerie and Norm Riggin, when you hear them preach this, that they would talk about uh, these, these faith 
patriarchs in chapter 11 sitting in heaven's grandstand watching us and encouraging us on. Uh, many, many, many great theologians teach it that way. I don't see it that way. I don't think, uh, I don't think that this text is about us, uh, uh, about these faith warriors sitting in heaven's grandstand because you would have to uh, conclude, uh, uh, first of all, before you uh, go there, you would have to first of all conclude that when you die, you go straight to heaven. Okay, and, and 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 many theologians disagree that when you die, you go straight to heaven, notwithstanding the verse that said to be absent with the Lord, to be present, and to be absent the body is present with the Lord. Okay, so you would have to conclude that when you die, you go directly to heaven, and and when you in heaven, you are conscious of what's going on down on earth. And I don't think that's theologically sound. So I reject the idea, the theological position that these are, are, are faith heroes that are sitting in this grandstand watching us. Let me tell you why. Notice what the writer says here. The writer says, wherefore, seeing we are also compass. It is saying we need to see. We need to recognize. We need to look at those faith warriors that's recorded in Hebrews chapter number 11. And what can we learn from them? What's the subject? This subject is faith. What does he talk about all of these faith warriors? He's talking about their faith. So what the writer is saying is that we have all of these witnesses Old Testament witnesses who were under the promise, who were under the law, but yet they are uh, uh, what connects the promise and the law and, and um, uh, grace and, and all of the dispensation is faith. Faith and love is faith. He said, although they were under a, dis a different dispensation, they still walk by faith. And the author goes all the way back to the first child, uh, Cain, uh, uh, first children, Cain and Abel, and, and uh, uh, chapter number 11, verse number, uh, not, uh, not, no, chapter number 11, verse number uh, four, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain and Abel, Brian, good evening to you, uh, uh, which were uh, uh, the, the first siblings, the first rivalry. Uh, uh, Cain killed Abel. But, but, but guess what he said here? Abel, the first child, was walking by faith. And he goes through this whole list of faith patriots, faith warriors, what we call the Faith Hall of Fame or the Mount Rushmore of Faith. And what he's saying to you, so he's saying to them, and he's saying to us that all of these individuals, they are witnesses that if in fact we could call them to the witness stand, they would tell us that it pays to walk by faith. Therefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, if we could call, glory to God, Noah to the stand, Noah would say, it paid to walk by faith. If we could call Enoch to the stand, he said, it paid to walk by faith. If we could call Noah, Abraham, Sarah, it goes on, Jacob, Joseph, Abraham again, Moses again, glory to God, the hearted Rahab, if we call any of them to the witness stand, they would tell us, and it pays to walk by faith. That faith is greater than works. Glory to God. Walking by faith is greater than trying to live by the law and live by works. So he says, first of all, I want you to see Mm. I want you to look at, I want you to recognize these cloud of witnesses that we could indeed, in fact, call to the stand and they would testify that it paid to walk by faith. Can I ask you a question? If you were called to the stand tonight, could you testify that there have been times in your life where you walk by faith, glory to God, and because you supplied the faith, God supplied the power? Can you testify that God has worked miracle after miracle after miracle in your life? Why? Because you supplied the faith, glory to God, and God supplied the power. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith is the scripture, the, uh, the, the scripture, the substance that's what's beneath your stand, that's what you're standing on. Glory to God. My testimony is that it pays to walk. It pays to live. It pays to move. It pays to move. It pays to go by faith. Faith. First of all, the, in, 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 in verse one, the writer said, see, see these witnesses. Now, whether or not they're in heaven's grandstand, I don't know. I don't think they are, but many theologians teach it that way. All I want y'all to understand is the fact that we have some witnesses. 
that we can call on and they will tell us, glory to God, that even under the Old Testament dispensation, you had to move and you had to live by faith. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Number one, he said, see, this all in verse one. I can preach a whole sermon that Miss Henry. Number two, he said, strip. Now, pastor, how you going to exegete strip out of that text? Notice what he said. And in the B clause, let us lay aside, strip it, take it off. <laughs> take it off. Every weight and these sin would so easily set us back. Now, Theologians uh, and uh, historians disagree as to whether or not he's referring here to the Olympics, to, to the Olympiads or to the Isthmus game. It really doesn't matter what Paul is. I'm, 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 I keep saying Paul, what the author here is alluding to, and he's alluding to a race. And, 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 and in those days when they had the Olympics and when they had the Isthmus game, only men were able to participate and go. So they, some of them ran naked and some of them ran almost naked. So he, he's giving a metaphor saying that the more, the more weight you have on you, the more baggage you have on you, the slower you are able to run. Can you imagine a 400 pound man trying to run the 100 yard dad? He's not beating anybody. Unless he's running against somebody that's 455, glory to God. He's saying, you're right, Evangelist, if it's slowing you down or weighing you down, the author here is saying, we've got to get rid of it. And, 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 and he calls it weights, <coughs> excuse me, and the sin. Weights slow you down. They slow your Christian growth. Sins will kill you. The wages of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He said, get rid of both of them. Get rid of that which slows you down and get rid of that which will kill you. Let us strip. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 22. See, because we got to get rid of this stuff. Because it's slowing us down. It's slowing our, spirit, our spiritual growth. And we want to know why we're not getting more from God we're not getting more from God because we're not growing in him. Watch this. Men play with tools. Boys play with toys. And as long as you continue to be a boy, God's going to give you some toy. But when you decide to grow and become a man, God's going to give you some tools. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter number four. We're talking about stripping now. Look at verse number 22. Ephesians four and number 22. Therefore, put off concerning the former conversation. We talked about that Sunday Clean up your conversation. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, that ye, and that ye put on the new man. Taz, good evening to you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things come anew. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Then he goes on to tell you some stuff. That you, I'll tell you what, he said, speaking every man the truth. Stop lying with his neighbor. Strip it. Lying will kill you. That's a sin. For we are members of one body. Miss Bernie said that and Deacon Wilder gave you. He said, be ye angry and sin not. We talked about that Sunday. It's okay to get angry. Then he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, don't let anger turn to bitterness and bitterness turn to your desire to get revenge. Get rid of it. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. How do you give place to the devil? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. By not walking, fulfilling Galatians 5, 16, walking in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The devil can't touch you mentally while you are in the spirit. It's just when you get out of the spirit and get in you, can the devil have his way. We're still on the strip in verse 1, chapter 12 of, 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 of Hebrew. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your cares on him. I'm talking to somebody who's carrying your cares. I'm, yeah, you, you carrying your cares. And God did not assign you. I like this. I may buy this tape myself. God did not assign us to carry our own cares. Now, he will allow you to carry your care. He will allow you to carry your burden. He will allow you to carry all of that mental anguish. But that's not what that's not his intention. His intention is for you to cast it on him. Give it to him. He's able to carry it. Cast it. Throw it away. Give it to him. Strip. Start 
story about man who fell in a hole with a briefcase. And a uh, friend came and lowered a rope down to get him out of the hole, and he pulled him up, and the man said, I got to go back and get my briefcase, Jacqueline. And, and he lowered the man back down in the hole, and as he was pulling him up, this time he wasn't coming out. And the man looked down the hole. He said, sir, I can pull you out, but you got to leave your stuff. And that's what God's telling me to tell some of you all. He can take you, but you got to get rid of your stuff. See, you can come as you are, but you can't stay as you are. Let me say that again. You can come. Everybody is welcome to the house of prayer. Everybody is welcome to the fold, but you can't stay as you are. Once you come into the family, there are some rules and there are some regulations of the family. You just can't do what the heck you want to do and be a member of the family. Mama, you tell us all the time what goes on in this house. One of the worst whippings I got, uh, 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 Denitra, was when I went out and told some stuff that was going on in our house. Mama whooped the hell out of me. Whooped hell out. Well, she ain't whooped it all out, but she whooped most of it out. Mama whooped me so bad. And I'm, and why you whooped me? Mama said, what goes on in the house, stay in the house. And we had certain rules and regulations of our house. Young people don't know anything about that. We had, the, we had what we call chores. We had to wash the dishes. We had to mop the floor. We had to clean up the room. We had to clean up the bathroom. And with, there were five of us. Each child had a chore to do in the house. And, 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 and there were no excuses about, I don't feel like it or I'm playing my PlayStation. The devil is a liar. You did your chore or you got your behind whipped. And once you come into the Christian family, there are certain ways you just need to start acting. Because watch this, Miss Valerie Norm Wiggum, we ain't changing for them. No, you got to acquiesce to the church. Too often the church acquiesce to the world. No, when you come in here, you got to act like God say act, whether we act that way or not. And one of the problems, and one of the problems, and one of the problems I just feel like ministering like one of the problems with this young crowd is they don't want to change. They want to come to church. And well, you just accept me and all my mess. No. No, boy, that's country. No. <laughs> Glory. We'll accept you, but we cannot continue to just accept you in your mess. Change. The purpose of church, the purpose of spirituality, the purpose of knowing Jesus is to make a change, not to continue down that same old path. And too often we as a church are changing for people and not challenging people to change. Glory to God like the church. OK, I'm still in strip. He said, man, I can pull you out. But you got to leave your step. He said, see, he said, strip. And then he said, start, exegete the text, pastor. He says, and the sin they've been set up and let us run. The metaphor, a race. We don't know whether it's the Isthmus game or the Olympiad, but it's a race. The writer here says, once you strip, run. You came and see some of y'all trying to run and you ain't stripping. And so you're not getting anywhere. You're bogged down. Because you're not stripping. You can't run this race and be successful with a lot of junk, with a lot of baggage, with a lot of weight, with a lot of sin. He said, run this race. And this race is a marathon. Glory to God. It's a marathon. It starts in the cradle and it ends in the grave. Say it again, Pastor. It starts in the cradle, glory to race, and it ends in the grave. We are in a race. Mm, and it's a marathon. I can't run your race, Bernie. And glory to God, you can't run mine. I can't run my children. They, all of us have a race. We got to run. And the songwriter says, I'm running by faith. And I won't quit until I see the finish line. He said, you got to start in, 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 in the race. But then he said, the fourth thing, you got to be steadfast. He, he uses the word patient here, but in the Greek, the word is steadfast. You got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. I told y'all, it's a marathon. I posted yesterday on my uh, Facebook page. I don't ask people when they're working out with me, are they tired? What I ask them is, are you ready to quit? Because please get this, everybody that's tired ain't ready to quit. Let me say it again. Everybody that's tired ain't ready to quit. Some of us tired, but we ready to push through the 
the tired. Some of us at our best when we get tired. Don't ask me if I'm tired. Ask me if I can continue to perform at a high level while I'm tired. Because some of you are like me. Tiredness doesn't mean anything to us. We're going to push through some tiredness. Now, the Bible does not say the race does not go to the swift nor the strong, but he who endured to the end. What we've done is, what they've done is, they have taken two scriptures and combined them. Ecclesiastes, they are Solomon, right? Where is it? I got it written down. Ecclesiastes, I got it somewhere. Glory to God, 9 and 11 says the race goes not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. Okay, that's all. And, and then Matthew 23 and 13 said, uh, uh, he that endured to the end shall be saved. So they really combine to, it does not matter. The fact of the matter is, I'll say it again, push, you're right, and keep on pushing. When you get tired, reach down and get something. It's those that quit when they get tired are the losers. It's those that they get tired and they reach down in their good and get something that says, I'm going to push through this problem. I'm going to push through this depression. I'm going to push through this heartache. I'm going to push, push. Glory to God, like a pregnant woman trying to get that baby here. Push. Well, I feel a Baptist holler coming on here. I said like a pregnant woman trying to get that baby here. You tired? Push. Don't ever forget that. Everybody tired ain't ready to quit. It's just those weak I almost call them chumps. Yeah, chumps. Yeah, they quit it. I'm tired. Well, just go on quit then. Because you're just taking up space anyway. He says, I told y'all, I had I four things out of, out of verse one alone. C step, C strip, start, step fast, finish what you started. And please understand me, we in this race to win. Paul came to the end of this journey in 2 Timothy and said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now, Paul, Paul was not talking about a marathon, but he was talking about a relay race. He was saying, I had a course, you got a course, Now it's time for me to get a baton to you. Now you got to run the course. Glory to God. We're in this thing to win it. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Turn there quickly. All right, just, just take your time. I'm just going to get as far as I can tonight because I just feel preacher in this house tonight. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. See, we're in this thing to win it. We, we got the reason we push Mary Thomas because we in this race to win it. We not in here for no for no for no. Oh my God, that's bad name. We not here for no second. We not here for no second. When I ran track, oh my God, I was so cocky and arrogant until I was at, at that point. Uh, Bernie, you got a false start before you can had the real start. Robert, Robert, when I was running track, uh, uh, I was so cocky and and I, and I was a hurdler, state state champion. In, in, in the hurdle, sub-14, um, um, and I would purposely jump, start the first one, and jump over the first hurdle real smooth, and I'd come back and say, y'all fighting for second because I got first. Not that bad. That bit bragging is arrogant, but fact of the matter is, it is what it is. I wasn't in it to lose is what I'm trying to tell you. Now, football is a whole other thing. I, I just couldn't stay healthy. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter number nine and verse number 24. We're in this thing to win it. Paul, uh, now Paul is writing here, Men Allen. Paul says, uh, know ye not, they which run in a race. We, I did tell y'all we were in a race. Run all, but one receiveth the prize. See, see, uh, I believe it was Vince Lombardi said that's first and then everybody else. Nobody remembers who comes in second. I never wanted a second trade place trophy. You can have it. Well, that's, well, well, that's mighty arrogant. Call it what you want to call it. So run that you may obtain. Paul said, man, go. We in this thing to win it. We in it to win it. Health-wise, we in it to win it. Financial-wise, Marvin, good evening to you. We, we in it to win it. Social-wise, social we in it to win it. Spiritual-wise, we in it to win it. Mental-wise, we're not in here to win. We're not running this race to, to lose. You, oh my God, somebody preaching, you can't, I can't lose. You can't lose with the stuff out of you. As long as we got Jesus, we in this thing to win it. Stop settling for second best. Stop lowering your expectation 
Nathan, good evening to you. Stop lowering your expectations to second because you think first. Who was it? John F. Kennedy said uh, when they asked him to run for vice president, he said, why in the world should I sell for second when first is available? I'm telling you first is available. I'm telling you that job first is available. I'm, I'm telling you that relationship first is available. I'm telling you that car, that house, whatever it is, first is available for you. If you just put in the work and run this race, glory to God. And, and watch this, where failure is not an option. God been telling some of y'all that's over 40 to go back to school and you scared. The devil is alive. Go back to school and get that degree. Be in it to win it. Be in it to win it. The devil been telling you to go get another job. I mean, not the devil. God been telling you to do this and do that, and you scared to do it. Open the business. You scared to open the business. The devil is a liar. Reverend Anderson, good evening to you. The devil is a liar. Be in it. Jerome Temple, we in this thing to win it, man. Ain't nobody in this thing to come in second. Nobody remembers who comes in second place. But they remember winners. And you and I, we are winners. Why? Because we can do all things, not something, preach boy. We can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Failure is not an option. Say that out loud. Failure is not an option. My business won't fail. My children won't fail. My church won't fail. My health won't fail. My mind won't fail. My body won't fail. We, we in this thing. Glory to God. Woo! We ended the winning. Lord Jesus, I'm still on verse 1. Four things we got from verse 1, chapter number 12. He, Hebrew. Four things we got, Bonnie. We saw, we stripped, we started, we got steadfast. Let's move to verse number 2. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 2. Remember now, he's proving that, that, that faith is superior to the law. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter number 12, look at verse number 2. Now he's, now he's going to tell you to stay focused. He told you to see, strip, start, stay fast. Now he's going to tell you to stay focused. You see, some of y'all are easily distracted. <laughs> oh, my God. And some of the stuff that distract y'all ain't worth the hill of beans. I mean, some of the things that get you all off course, oh my God, it's not even worth you looking that way, let alone going that way. I know I'm talking to the right crowd, okay? Y'all can hold your amen, but, but why did I know I'm talking to the right crowd. Verse number two, obviously I'm not going to get for Looking on the Jesus. Now he said, see the crowd, but I want you to stay focused on Jesus. Why? Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the alpha, the first Greek alphabet. He's omega, the last. And if he's alpha and omega, that means he's everything in between. See, your faith starts with Jesus Christ. Actually, it starts back in the garden. It with God because, watch this. If, 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 if we can get you to believe by faith that God created the heaven and the earth, the rest of it is smooth sailing. <laughs> Glory to God. If we can get you to believe that a virgin had a baby, the rest of it is smooth sailing by faith. He said, Jesus is other, not Paul, not Silas, not Brown, not your pastor, not your bishop, not your prophet, not your overseer, not your prophetess. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Reverend Anderson, uh, that's, uh, I just went over that scripture. That's really not what the Bible, the race will not, but the, uh, uh, turn around, uh, the race will not, oh, okay, the Bible does say that. The Bible does say the race does not go to the swift, nor the that battle to the strong, but okay, so it does say that, Reverend. God bless you. He said, who, who for the joy, what did He said, look at under Jesus, the author finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and do the cross. He said, Jesus, mm, stay focused on Jesus because Jesus will show you how to handle your trouble. He said, Jesus endured the cross, a sinless person, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the Lord. Whenever you see it said, Jesus said the right of the Father, that means his work is finished because the priest never sat down until he was through. Jesus' work is finished. On the cross, he sit, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. What's he doing? Interceding. When you mess up, he said, Dad, I died for that. When you curse somebody else, he said, Daddy, I died for that. 
when you do something, you have no baby. He said, Daddy, I die. Interceding, interceding, interceding on our behalf. He said, he said, stay focused. Listen, you remember, in, in, he said, not only look to him, but listen to him. You remember in Matthew 17, with Jesus take a piece of James and Jonathan, I seen the high mountain and was transfigured before them and his face just shining the light in his uh, at the sun and his, and his raiment was white as the light and there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking to him and Peter said, Lord, it's just good for us to be here. Let him make here three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for thee, one for Elijah. And the voice of God came out and said, watch this. He said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. If you ever want to know who to listen to, listen to Jesus and what he says in the word of God. Okay, so he said, first of all, if you're going to run, you got to see, you got to strip, you got to start, you got to be step fast, then you got to stay focused. And then he shifts, mm, he shifts to verse three to talking about suffering. Look at verse three. For, for consider him, there is again, look at Jesus. Consider him, focus on Jesus, who endured the contradiction of sinners against himself, Least ye be weary and faint in your mind. He says, what translation there? He's saying, look to Jesus, who is our example for how to act when we're suffering. Teresa, good evening to you. What kind of attitude? Philippians 2 talk, talked about how, how Jesus endured the cross. Here, he's saying, when you're going through something, don't focus on the problem. Look at Jesus. He said, Jesus endured much and he didn't even sin he said because if you don't look to him you will get weary and faint in, and faint in your mind because of your trouble john 16 33 says in this life why you think you so precious you can't go through something god only knows he said in this life you shall have tribulation but be of good courage for i have overcome the world he, now he's talking about suffering saints you're gonna have to suffer and every time you're suffering, is not because of sin. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And everybody that's on this broadcast tonight is going through something. I'll say it again. Now, some of us cover it up better than others, but everybody on this broadcast, Patricia Frazier, Mary Thomas, Bernice Hutchinson, is going through something where... God is testing their faith. He says, here's what I want you to do. When you are suffering, Melinda, look to Jesus. When you're suffering, when you're going through Gina, look to Jesus. When you're going through Jacqueline, look to Jesus. Why? Number one, he's often finished by faith. N number two, he endured the cross, Robert, joyfully. Miss Yvonne H. Whitfield, look to him. He says, he said, because if you don't, you'll get tired and give up and quit. And ain't no quitting in y'all. Now, some of y'all are on the verge of quitting. I'm going to say it again. Some of you all are on the verge of quitting, and the devil is using your absence away from church as a way to keep you more depressed and more on the verge of quitting. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. Now, verse 4. He says, um, ye, have, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. What in the world that mean? I'm glad you asked. That means y'all hadn't died. Y'all hadn't died yet for the cause Jesus did. Y'all have not been martyred. Yes, you've gone through. Yes, you have gone through. Yes, you have gone through, but you hadn't had to give up your life. Jesus had to give up his life. Verse 5. He said, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. So now he's leaving, he, he, he's not leaving sonship, I'm sorry, he's not leaving suffering, Melinda, but he's adding, adding sonship to the suffering. Letting you know that Jesus suffered and you as a child of God, sonship, you're going to have to suffer too, okay? Verse, verse five. See, this, we can make a complicated scripture real easy. Verse five. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not the, ch the chastening or the correcting. You see, 
Okay, I'm, I'm telling you a minute. The chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Chastening, the word can, there's something there called semantic, oh my God, semantic, I forgot what it is, semantic, um, um, I forgot what the word is, but it, it means that words have different meaning. It's not, it's not semantic flow, but I forgot what it is. I, I, I thank him before I go. Uh, but this word chastening, it could mean punishment. It, it, but it could also mean training. And when thou art rebuked. Okay. He says, for whom the Lord chastens, it also could mean correct. <laughs> it also mean punish, could mean punish. It also could mean um, correct, punish, uh, or train. We just don't know which one he's talking about. All right. Now, I'm not going there. And scourges every son whom he received. Corrects. Okay, verse number 17. If you endure chastening, now my word here says correcting. Some people think it's punishing. It's correcting. Now, correcting could be punishing. All right? He's talking about the sonship under suffering. Oh, that's good. We talked about seeing. We talked about stripping. We talked about starting. We talked about steadfast. We talked about staying focused. Now we, we talked about suffering. Now we're talking about the suffering of the sonship. He said, if you endure correcting, chastening, punishing, whichever way you want to interpret it, okay, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father corrects not? I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty sorry, uh, that's a pretty sorry daddy who just let folk do it, uh, just let children do what they want to do. You know, um, um, you pretty sorry parent if your children run your house. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I know I'm not talking to anybody on this broadcast who let the children run the house. But uh, I know some folk where the children run the house. And children, uh, it's what the children say. The devil is a lie. A ain't nobody running uh, nothing here but evangelists. And, 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 and everything she doesn't run, I'm going to run. Glo glory to God. N nothing stand in my house I'm scared of. Okay, maybe I need to lay anchor there. I'll say it again. Nothing or nobody is staying in my house that I'm scared of. If I can't tell you when to go, how to go, when to come up, when to get up, when to go, da 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 go find you a place to stay. I'm comfortable with that. I, I, I remember when my son TJ got older and uh, he, he had to be Teenager, Bernie, and uh, I had a rule, you know, if you, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, he had to be in the 20, that um, uh, my, my, my first rule that you had to be in the house at a certain time because I'm locking my door. And uh, glory to God, uh, uh, I, and I told him, now look, if, you, if you're not at home by a certain time, you, I'm, I don't care how old you are, I'm locking my door. And so, let me tell you what that note here did, uh, Ann. He would, I had an old car in the driveway. Before he would leave that Friday, he would go get a blanket and put it in the car. I said, what are you doing that for? I'm going to sleep in the car because I know you're going to let me in. I said, well, at, at, at least you know. Another rule I got, you can't stay at my house when I go to church. Uh-uh. Nope. You, you're not, if you're not sick, you're not staying at my house while I go to church. Now, TJ again. I couldn't make him go to church, but I put him out my. I literally put him out my house. When I, I was pastoring here in Auburn, and and, uh, and I, we were living in Montgomery. I said, I don't care. I'll be back at one o'clock. You can go to the pool hall for all I care, but you leaving here while I'm gone. If you're not sick, you're not staying at my house while you go to church. Now y'all, while I go to church, now y'all run y'all house the way you want to run it. Let children run all over you. Tell you when they coming, when they going. That between y'all and them. Glory to God. But listen to what he said. Listen to what the writer says here. Um, but if, he said, if it be without chastising, chest, chest, chastening or chastisement, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 17. If you endure ch chastening, God deal it with you as with son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth it not? An idiot. Verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, Wherefore are all partaker then 
Are ye bastard? Well, bastard, that means Ill, Ill, illegitimate. That must not be your child and not sons. Now, please understand me. You have to, I, I've got to say this. You have to treat girls differently from boys. You, you can put boys out. Got to, got to deal with them little girls a little differently because if they 16 and rebellious, they waiting on, you, they got some 20-year-old down the road waiting on you to put her out. You can't put her out. You got to some kind of way deal with that internally. But, but, but if it's a boy, bye. Hadios, hasta la vista. See you when you get back. <laughs> Glory to God. Got, got, got to deal with them little girls differently, though. Okay? He says, if your daddy don't chastise you, then he treating you like a bastard, like you're not his child. Like, you, like he not your daddy. I, I know I'm talking to the right crowd. Okay, I'm trying to keep this thing uh, rated PG. Okay, verse number nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us. Okay, we've got parents who loved us enough to correct us. Thank God. Thank God for parents who understand discipline. And when I say discipline, I'm not talking about whipping all, all the time. So some of y'all whip too much. Every time somebody, yeah, you go grabbing a belt, grabbing a switch. Devil, some, uh, 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 that more way to discipline somebody other than where the Bible says, spare the rod for the child. Is that the only verse you know? The Bible also says, revoke not your child of anger. Devil, every time you turn around, hey, you, you, you worried my mama. Time you turn around, there she go. I'm going to whip you. I'm gonna get, don't you know how to do something else? God rest her soul. Go get me a switch. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, let me get through with this. Oh, my God. Whipping is not the all-out get-out. Devil, yeah, they whooped us, and look how messed up we are. Grandmama and them whooped their, our parents. Look how messed up they were. Whipping ain't always the answer. It didn't work, my nether. No, I, my nether, I disagree with that. It didn't work. It didn't work for me. I was rebellious and bad at the devil. I, I, in spite of all those whipping. The, the old people lied to us, talking about, well, you know, whipping helped us. How'd they help you? You dysfunctional, messed up, mentally, psycho psychologically messed up, can't keep relationship. I, I'm about the real old, the real old folk who used to, who used to, who used to tell us, oh, whooping it worked for me. It didn't work for them either. All of them had messed up lives. Underachievers. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm not saying there's not a purpose in whipping. I'm, I'm just saying to tell the last time I did work, it ain't work for me. It, a whipping did not work for me. It only made me more angry and more rebellious. Now, maybe it worked for some of y'all. I'm just keeping it 100. All right? Seemed like it, my nether. <laughs> I agree with that. All of them dysfunction. Those who got a whipping and those who didn't. I'm not against whipping. I'm saying some of y'all grab a belt, grab a switch, Grab all that, you know, uh, mom, mom be whoop up with a extension cord. Mom, and that was abuse. Mama whooped up with an extension cord. She whooped you with a shoe. She, it, did, it, 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 it didn't matter. Whatever was clothed, the woman abused her. God rest her soul. <laughs> mom, and I'm telling the truth, that woman would whoop you with whatever she got. Whatever was clothed. Okay. Let me get back to the text. But it's, it's talking about chest, chastising. Whipping is not the, oh, yeah, I survived. Yeah, I did. And I turned out all right. God bless mama. I turned out all right in spite of all those, those whipping. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh were correct us. Thank God you got people that correct you. Okay. They may not have got it right, but they had, in, they had good intention. And see, okay, I'm, I don't know why I'm, 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 I'm flowing like this tonight. Uh, by trade, I'm a, I'm a therapist, and when you when you see some of the thing that I've seen, where some of these parents have abused and and maimed, and I mean I've counseled children where um, mama stuck them in hot water for punishment. I've, I've I've counseled teenagers where men went and stuck their private parts on electric fences for punishment. Where I've counseled kids where uh, their parents lit literally stuck their hand in in boiling grease just for just for how, uh, uh, just for how, I, matter of fact, I know, uh, I counsel one person who, who mama boyfriend shot at him, mama held him up and he got a bullet in his head right now because I mean, come on. And, and so when you've seen some of the things I've seen, then you are hesitant to, to say y'all whip your child because some of that foolishness is abuse. 
And Jacqueline, yes, it's abuse, but the problem is who determines what's abuse? Because what they did to us, what mama did to us, was abuse. And what some of y'all do to y'all children, y'all call it what, what y'all want to call it. And, okay, my wife said, let God use me. I'm getting kind of psychological now. And mamas, if you have boys, at some point, you got to start whipping these boys. Because what you're doing is you are making your son comfortable having a confrontation with a female. Let me say it again. Mamas, you have to be careful how you chastise your teenage boy. Because you're teaching him how to be confrontational and how to be physical with a female. And you don't want him going out abusing women because he's, a com because he's comfortable with a physical altercation with a female. That's deep, Mary. But you're teaching a boy. It's okay to have a physical contact, to have physical confrontation with a boy. I mean, with a woman. Okay, let me, let me go on. Verse number um, nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of the flesh that correct us. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of the spirits and live? Shall we not be subjected to our heavenly father? Because he is our heavenly father. John 1, 12 says to them, he gave power to become sons of God. Glory to God. We, we are his children. Galatians 3, 26. Okay. And the Bible says that we suffer with him. We will reign with him. Verse, verse 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure or the word pleasure that simply means at their discretion. You know, some parents punish for little things. Some punish for everything, you know, at, at, at your discretion, depending on what are the rules of your house. Well, okay. That we might be partakers. I'm sorry. For they verify a few days, but he, meaning God, for our profit. God corrects us for our profits. Okay that we might be partakers of his holiness. The reason God will chastise us, train us, or even punish us is to push us to holiness. What is holiness? It's a lifestyle, con it's a lifestyle conducive with walking in the spirit. That's holiness. <laughs> That's all holiness is. It's a lifestyle conducive with being led by the spirit. Let me say it again. That's all holiness is. It's a lifestyle. It's not jumping up and down. It's not hoop hollering and shouting. Not speaking in tongue. It's not dot dot that. It's a lifestyle that's conducive to being led by the Spirit. When you are led by the Spirit, you are holy. It means separated. It means separated for a divine cause. Now, once you are holy, it, it will manifest itself in a lot of different ways. Okay, verse 10. We're still under the suffering of the sonship. Okay? For they... Verily, for a few days, chasten us after their own pleasure. I got that. Verse 10. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. It wasn't. You know, mama used to tell me that. And no, no, mama ain't tell me that lie. <clears throat> oh, but some of y'all, it didn't hurt me more than hurt you. No, it didn't. It didn't hurt you to get nobody whipping. <laughs> it's a dog. No, no, no. But grievous. Yeah, it's grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yielded peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which they are exiled by. Now, what that's saying? That's saying if you discipline somebody and discipline right, it will have a positive benefit. <laughs> See, whipping doesn't change, doesn't alter everybody's behavior. Some folk don't mind getting a whipping. Oh, my God. Some folk don't mind you. Hey, mama, give me a whipping. Just don't take my cell phone. Some people don't mind getting a whipping. But okay, you got you, you got you got a choice. Get a whipping or you can't go out with your friends. Whip me. And parents, when you chastise your children, make sure the punishment fit the crime. <laughs> I mean, make sure that the punishment, devil, some of y'all go cuckoo for cocoa pop. Make sure you're not making a mountain out of a molehill. All right. Let me get through with this part, and, I, and I, I'm going to be through for tonight. He said, he said, fruit of righteousness, the excited by, in, in, in other words, 
Uh, who determines what, my netter? Uh, what's appropriate? Each parent. You know, some of the stuff that I got whipping for, uh, y'all may not get whipping for, cause, you know, some of the stuff that these children do, oh my God, Lord have mercy. Some of the stuff these children do, I, um, I, 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 we would have been whipped to death. So each, you know, you have to decide the rules and regulations for your environment, for your children. But make sure, oh, I'm going to turn this in, into a counseling session, but make sure the punishment fit the crime and make sure that you do what you say you're going to do because punishment doesn't work when it's delayed. I'm going to get you for that. No, get me now. <laughs> mom was bad at that too. Uh, mom, mom, I don't know why I'm talking about mom now because, because that's my only frame, uh, frame of reverence. I didn't have a daddy. You know, I'm going I'm to I'm get you. Don't make me come in there. Ha, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. And then when she get in there, she put me for the old and the new. And she, girl, mama, I mean, she started going back. And remember that, and remember that, and remember that. It's counseling. And I, I know that's right. Okay, verse number 12. And I'm going to end with 13. Because now he's shifting from the suffering and the sonship under suffering to now he's stimulating them. He, he's going to give them some encouragement now, and we'll deal with most. I tell you what, I, I'm going to stop there. And um, we can pick up that next next week. Let me review, okay? Uh, verse one, with there were four points. Preachers, they'll preach all by themselves. All you gotta do is add a hoop to it, okay? Um, 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 uh, the writer said, see, strip, start the run, then stay in the race. Then he said in verse two, be steadfast, don't don't quit. We ended to win it. Then verse three, he started with the suffering, three and four, and then he brought sonship in it all the way down to verse number eleven. Uh, and now and then in verse number 12, next week we'll talk about the stimulation and we'll go from there. That's it for tonight. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. If you think somebody needs to see this, uh, share it. Uh, we're in in-house worship Sunday morning. Oh my God, we were singing quartet again. Matter of fact, we've been singing quartet ever since we've been back in church singing quartet. If you're a quartet, quartet singer and you want to sing with me Sunday, just inbox me. Just inbox me. Don't do it on Facebook. Or message me. My phone number, they don't put my personal phone number up there in just a minute. Okay? Here is how you can support the church. God bless you. Keep giving. Keep giving. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Uh, we start at 9, get out maybe 10, 10, 15, 10, 20. Uh, peanut butter and jelly drive going on. Go to the website for that because I can't tell you what it's about. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, that's my personal phone number there. There it is, personal, uh, 728-1221. Uh, feel free to cash up me, your tithe, your offering, and I'll get it over to them if you're having trouble getting it. Oh, what else? Uh, there's a peanut butter and jelly drive. We're always trying to help somebody at the church on the hill. Uh, they collecting peanut butter and jelly, I think, for the food bank. Uh, go to the website, and they'll tell you more about that. Reverend Ware. Uh, we'll be back from his two-week, three-week, four-week hiatus and uh, teaching tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Uh, Sunday, we will continue our study in Matthew. We, we're going, same what we do on Tuesday night, going through the Bible. We're in Matthew chapter number 5, uh, and hopefully we'll complete chapter 5 this week. God bless y'all. May keep you. If you're not vaccinated... Um, we strongly encourage you, I <laughs> probably shouldn't say this, but if you're not vaccinated, we encourage you, don't come indoors at MTV. I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, well, at the church, yeah, yeah, but if, but if you had a gun and, and, and you came in there shooting, we'll tell you not to come in there and put our lives at danger then too. So if you're not vaccinated, please don't come putting our lives in, in danger. Please don't. Uh, if you don't care enough about yourself at least care enough about us and what and our desire not to get the coronavirus and die okay uh plenty of churches will let you come and invite you to come with the virus and let them, amen but please please if, if if you're not vaccinated uh, watch us on facebook live um um i had this incident and i'm and, and i'm through i'm through teaching an incident when i went to buy a car the, the salesperson came out with no mad. This has been several months ago. And uh, 
and and and, and I don't deal with people who don't have masks. And uh, so um, I wrote a review afterwards, and I basically told the manager on on the review site that the person um, had no concern for my health. And the manager wrote me back on that thing and, and said, we follow CDC guidelines. And I wrote him back and I said, that's cool, but if I had a oxygen tank on, the CDC guidelines say you can smoke, but certainly you wouldn't light a cigarette because you're concerned about my health. What I'm saying to you, if you're not concerned about your health, please allow me to be concerned about mine. I'm fully vaccinated and I still wear a mask. I heard some information today and yesterday, 99.8%, please get this, 99.8% of the people who are in the hospital and dying from COVID have not been vaccinated. Think about that. Everybody vaccinated living less than 2%. And please get this, and I'm finished for real this time. Stop thinking that your family members are safe. Let me say that again. Stop thinking that you being safe because you're around nobody but your family members when they don't live with you. That ain't the truth. Your family members who are not vaccinated are very likely to catch the virus and give it to you. Well, I've been vaccinated. Yeah, but we don't, we don't want the lasting effects of the disease, <laughs> uh, of the virus. No, we may not die, but we don't want to be coughing for the rest of our lives. We don't want our lung capacity to be damaged for the, for the rest of our lives. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I guess I am kind of fussing, but, you know, if, if I influence any, any of you, if I have any influence over you, if, if your doctor say get the vaccine, that, that it's okay, then stop being zip ahead free and putting people in danger because you zip ahead free. With that, I'm gone. Peace.